Your cat lady friend has asked you to cat sit her loves while she's away for the weekend. You arrive at the house and open the fridge to feed them something healthy, like chicken. You notice a bar of chocolate and decide to give it to them as a treat. Wow, that's a siren! Your friend calls you and yells at you. Turns out she has an alarm system that goes off when there's any danger to her kitties. You should never ever feed them chocolate. It has some toxic substance in it called theobromine. No worries, human metabolism naturally takes care of it. That's why you can safely eat chocolate. Lots of it. The more the better. Oops, sorry, got carried away. Well, this doesn't work the same way for cats, though. Another dangerous component is caffeine. All sorts of chocolate are dangerous to them. Semi-sweet, milk, and even white chocolate with its low percentage of cocoa. Also, there's chocolate brownies, donuts, cookies, and candies. The worst kinds are dark and baker's quality chocolate because they have more cocoa in them. A tiny square of baking chocolate can do as much harm as 23 wrapped chocolate drops. Chocolate ice cream might not be that dangerous cocoa-wise, but it also has sugar and lactose from the milk, so it's another no-go. Chocolate is also poisonous to dogs, but the hazard depends on their size. Owners of hamsters, rabbits, and birds must all exclude chocolate from their pet's diet, too. Artificial sweetener xylitol is also bad for pets, with no exceptions. It can be found in candy, sugarless gum, toothpaste, baked goods, and many diet foods. It's most dangerous for dogs. You better make sure any foods containing it are out of reach. Now, most cats just love tuna, and it's fine for them to eat the cat food variety of it. Regular canned tuna for humans on a regular basis can deprive them of some important nutrients cats need to be healthy. Don't leave open cans anywhere accessible for your kitty. Liver is safe for felines in small amounts, but too much of it can give them more vitamin A than they can handle. Neither cats nor dogs need onions in any form, powdered, raw, cooked, or dehydrated in their diet. Garlic is five times stronger than onions, so it must be excluded as well. Never give your cat a saucer of milk, a piece of cheese, or other dairy. Most felines can't digest lactose, so it would cause them serious stomach issues. The same is true for dogs. Dairy products can cause food allergies in them. So instead of sharing your ice cream cone on a summer day, give your pup cold water to drink. Grapes and raisins aren't exactly the best treat for your pet. Even a small amount can make them sick. Early symptoms would be sluggishness in dogs and hyperactivity in cats. Caffeine in coffee, tea, and even the beans and the grounds, as well as cola and energy drinks, can be fatal for your fluffy family member. It increases heart rate and breathing, makes them restless, and gives them muscle tremors as early symptoms. Fat trimmings off meat and bones, both cooked and uncooked, can give your kitty or doggy some bad digestion issues. Bones are dangerous for both as they can choke on them. They can also become an obstruction in the digestive system, and that's no good. Raw eggs and meat can be the reason of food poisoning in cats because of some sneaky bacteria in them. Raw egg whites also contain a protein that can give your kitty skin and coat problems. Raw fish is also bad. It contains an enzyme that destroys vitamin B, which is super important for felines. When they don't have enough of it, they can have neurological problems. Now, if you like to feed your cat dog food or your dog cat food, stop right there. If either of them tries a bite of the other species' food by accident, it won't be that bad. But on a regular basis, cats need a diet that's richer in proteins and certain vitamins and fatty acids. Dog food doesn't have enough of these nutrients. Dogs need a much more balanced diet than cats, and cat food is too high in fat, calories, and protein for them. It could lead to obesity and seriously upset their tummies. Something as harmless and vitamin-rich as an avocado can give your pup food allergies. The reason for it is that the leaves, seed, and bark, and the fruit of an avocado are all rich in person. Too much of this fatty, acid-like substance can cause less than pleasant stomach issues. Plus, the seed can become an obstruction in the stomach. Avocados are also one of the most dangerous foods for rabbits and are bad for pet birds because of person. Some types of birds are fine with it, and some give them heart damage. 
So it's better not to play the guessing game and not give them the fruit at all. Persimmons, peaches, and plums are a no-go because they have seeds or pits. Peach and plum pits aren't just a prospective obstruction in the intestines, but also have cyanide in them. It's poisonous for both people and dogs. When yeast dough gets in a cat or dog's stomach, it does its natural thing. It rises. This can stretch the pet's abdomen and give them pain. When you're baking, don't leave the dough where your pet can snack on it. (laughs) It's just a regular day. As usual, you're taking a shower before starting to get ready for work. Everything is going as planned. Until it isn't. One clumsy move, some water spilled on the floor, and you're flapping your arms in the air, your body nearing the floor with frightening speed. Everything goes black. First thing you hear is a high-pitched whining in your head. Ouch, your head. Ugh. You carefully get up. There's no blood, and that's good. An even better thing is that the annoying noise stops abruptly. Holding your head, you leave the bathroom and almost stumble over your cat, Milo. He hisses, and then a clear voice in your head says, Clumsy loser. Huh? You whip your head around in fear, but you see no one. It's just you and Milo? You've probably hit your head more than you thought. You shrug and make your way to the kitchen. Milo follows you. You hear ceaseless grumbling. Why can he sleep in the bedroom and I'm banned from there? Why haven't I gotten my meal yet? This leather creature is too lazy. Shall I scratch the sofa or leave a mouse on his pillow? The first thought that comes to your mind is, we have mice in the house? The second is more relevant. I'm losing my marbles, great! Acting on autopilot, you pour some milk into Milo's bowl and fill another one up with some dry food. The cat doesn't seem to be satisfied with how fast you are. If his, oh for goodness sake, move it, man, is anything to go by. Okay, now you'll have to live with the knowledge that your beloved cat Milo actually has the personality of a grumpy old man. Duh. You decide to lock yourself in the bathroom again because you're starting to get overwhelmed. You sit down heavily on the toilet lid and almost jump a foot in the air when you hear someone arguing loudly. After looking around, you find out that, apparently, there are not only mice, but also cockroaches in your house. Just great. At the moment, you're staring at a couple of these insects, which seem to be having a fight. At least, one of them is accusing the other of... Wait, what? Cheating? You've heard enough. You're about to dash out of the bathroom when you hear a bang. In the living room, you find your cat on the floor under a smashed flower pot. The worst thing? He seems to be really hurt. He won't stop whimpering and meowing. Ugh, it hurts! It hurts! My paw! Ouch! Ouch! But the sofa can't remain unscratched today. You grab Milo, shove him into the carrier. Hey, watch out, you leather bag! And head for the clinic. On the way, You have to concentrate hard to block out the noise of countless voices assaulting you. The waiting area at the vet is full. Uh Uh-oh, you're in for a long wait. Half an hour later, your head is ready to explode. You found out that that yellow python is suspiciously interested in the hamster a girl in the corner is clutching to her chest. So fat, so pretty. The hamster's worried about his stash of nuts. Where did I hide them? Where, where, where? A tiny dog that has come with an elderly lady is anxious about needles. Ah, If that shop thingy comes near me once again, they'll regret it. I'll destroy everyone on my way. Finally, it's your turn. The vet invites you to her office, and you bend to pick up Milo when a desperate-looking young man bursts into the room. My puppy! What's wrong with him? The vet looks at you apologetically, but you're focused on the puppy. It looks weak, but you manage to figure out the words, Chocolate! Yum! When you tell the vet and the anxious owner that the pooch has eaten some chocolate, which is basically poison for dogs, they give you a funny look and disappear into the doctor's office. Sometime later, the guy exits, holding the dog that looks 
significantly better than before. When they leave, the vet turns to you. How did you figure out the dog had eaten chocolate? Uh-oh, here it comes. You decide that honesty is the best strategy and tell the vet that you can understand what animals say. Of course, she doesn't believe you. You have to try hard to persuade her. But with the help of two other dogs, Milo and an elderly squirrel, you manage to make her believe you. When you get back home, your head is spinning and you're pretty hungry. All you can think about is some fried eggs and bacon. Yum. Wait, bacon? But it's, uh uh-oh. Apparently, starting today, you're a vegan. Anyway, that's when it starts. You don't know how it happens, but you become famous overnight. The next morning, a loud noise wakes you up, and it doesn't sound like animals talking to you. You look out of the window and see crowds of people gathered around your house. Some of them are reporters, but others are pet owners that have come to ask you for help. Milo is not happy. While grumbling nonstop and calling you names, he bites your leg and retreats under the stairs. And you go out of your house to talk to people and answer the reporter's questions. In the evening, you're exhausted, but also happy. You've saved several animals today. They had serious health and psychological problems their owners couldn't figure out on their own. Lying in bed in the dark, you think of how you can use your ability. That's when your plan takes shape. Soon, you become the most renowned animal care specialist in the world. You listen to animals talking about their problems, talk them out of depression, and help them resolve misunderstandings with their owners. Now, you're watching this video on some gadget, right? Well, we all owe the gadgets we have to the electric eels in some way. I mean, all gadgets have batteries, and eels contributed a lot to the invention of an electric battery back in 1800. I know, I know, the batteries have unrecognizably changed since then, but still, the first electric battery ever was invented thanks to electric eels. Anyway, if you see one of them and want to thank them for their magnificent invention, don't do that. Thing is, they can deliver shocks up to 860 volts. You don't want to experience that. Now let's talk about the Count Dracula of the animal kingdom. Nope, I'm not talking about bats. I'm talking about the fanged vampire fish. These fish are known as payara and have two long fangs protruding from their lower jaw. Here's why some people associate them with vampires. Hippos are the beauty gurus, since they know how to save a fortune on skincare. Living under the harsh African sun, these animals secrete a sweat-like red oily substance that evaporates and keeps the animal's bodies cool. Besides, the fluid works as a moisturizer, sunscreen, and antibiotic all in one. But they're not the only ones with such a superpower. Mantis shrimp know how to produce natural sunscreen too, but they use it for eye protection. It's all about amino acid pigments, and these pigments act as special filters that contribute to their sharp vision too. That's what I call multitasking. Meerkats have dark patches around their eyes which makes them look even cuter. But these black circles aren't there just to make these buddies more adorable. They also function as built-in sunglasses. The dark fur on the patches blocks the blazing sun, and as a result, meerkats can gaze directly at the sky. On top of that, the sentry, a meerkat that watches out for birds and other predators, can easily see danger coming and alert its mates. Wild goats are famous for their climbing skills, but the alpine ibex from northern Italy is the champion. This critter can climb nearly any vertical surface, defying several physical laws in the process. Interestingly, the animals that do walk on the steepest cliff walls are typically mother goats with their little ones. Large males prefer to keep their distance and use flat horizontal surfaces. Eh, smart guys. Some animals protect themselves with venom or nasty bites, while others use chemical tricks for protection. Listen to this. Some species of millipedes produce hydrogen cyanide and exude it when they feel threatened. Hydrogen cyanide is odorless but highly toxic. One little millipede can't seriously hurt you, 
but you may have burns or even blisters if your skin is sensitive. Plus, to make the picture even scarier, some millipedes glow in the dark. So watch out, and if you see a crawling spot of light at night, run away as fast as you can. When the bombardier beetle feels threatened, it sprays scorching liquid from the tip of its abdomen with a loud popping sound. As soon as the beetle senses danger, a chemical reaction starts in special reservoirs in its abdomen. The heat from this process nearly reaches the boiling point and also produces special gas that triggers the ejection. This super protection is usually fatal for the attacking insects. <laughs> I guess so. Plumed basculus lizards have an uncanny ability to run on water. First of all, their hind feet are equipped with long toes which have fringes of skin that can spread out in the water. As a result, a bigger surface of the lizard's foot comes into contact with water. Then, when it runs on water, it pumps its legs incredibly fast. This creates little pockets of air that prevent the animal from drowning by keeping it on the surface. Now, fleas can be annoying, but it doesn't make them any less amazing. These tiny critters can leap about 50 times their body length. If people could do the same, we would be jumping about a quarter of a mile into the air. Well, let's try it! <laughs> the most curious thing about fleas' astonishing ability is that they take most of the power for leaps from their toes, not knees. So, what's your favorite animal superpower? I vote for the kangaroo rat. I don't like standing in lines for the bathroom. Mm -mm. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.